Good afternoon to the 64th webinar of Parole University. Our tagline is Be Here, Be Vibrant. Following this tagline, every week we arrange webinars of renowned personalities of homeopathy. This is how we bring the homeopathic knowledge to the students of homeopathy. We are very blessed to have a dynamic president of Parole University, Dr. Devanshu Patel, sir, who always motivates us as well as the director of Ayush Colleges, Dr. Komal Patel Madhav. And we have a team of vibrant principals, that is Dr. Purav Desai, the dean, as well as the principal of JNHMC, myself, Dr. Hina Rawal, the principal of Ahmedabad Homeopathic Medical College, Dr. B.P. Panda, sir, the principal of Parul Institute of Homeopathy and Research, and Dr. Hitarth Mehta, sir, the principal of Ra Rajkot Homeopathic Medical College. So this is our humble effort to see that more and more renowned personalities of homeopathy come to this platform and address the students of homeopathy. I would like now like to welcome Dr. Ranjit Soni, sir, who has done his BHMS honors from Kolkata University and has done his post-graduation from National Institute of Homeopathy, Kolkata. Sir is recently a research officer, homeopathy scientist one, clinical research unit homeopathy, Siliguri, under Central Council of Research of Homeopathy, Ministry of Ayush, Government of India. Sir has got various publications like book review politics of prescribing, multiple filiform boards treated with Thuja, a case report, Richard Hughes' homeopathic philosophy, a shorter view, pharmacovigilance and homeopathy, a review, keynotes in homeopathy, and various other such publications. Sir has presented papers at various national seminars and has been a resource person at many CMEs sponsored by RAV, Ministry of Ayush, Government of India, as well as CMEs of Central Council of Research of Homeopathy, Ministry of Ayush, Government of India. It is my pleasure and privilege today to welcome Sir to this 64th webinar of Parul University. Please, sir, please welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, first, uh, let me uh, share my slide. Ma'am, my uh, screen is visible. Yes, sir. It is visible and you are audible also, sir. Your screen is visible. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Voice, uh, sorry, madam. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I would like to bid thanks to Dr. Uh, Hina Rawal, Dr. Pura Sai, Dr. B.P. Panda, sir, Dr. Hitarth Mehta, Dr. Gurudev Chaube, officer in charge CRU Siliguri, and all the uh, faculty members and authority of the faculty of homeopathy, Parul University Gujarat, for giving this uh, great opportunity to speak on a very uh, important topic that is advanced teaching of fundamental of homeopathy with clinical case study. Before uh, starting, uh, I would like to say that this is my second introduction with the homeopathic fraternity of Gujarat students, UG, PG, and all. Before that, in uh, 2019, November, I went to Jamnagar, Gujarat, as a uh, coordinator of Peripheral Pharmacovigilance Center, RIS Guwahati to participate in the uh, Ayur Suraksha. It was a conference on uh, related to the pharmacovigilance and there I got the opportunity to interact with the uh, not only the homeopathy but Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha and all. And there uh, it was a very nice meeting with the uh, students and uh, doctors uh, of homeopathy of Gujarat. So let's start. Actually, the today's topic that is advanced teaching of fundamental of homeopathy with clinical case study. So uh, we, for the next one hour, we shall 
talk about or we shall deal with the advanced teaching of fundamental of homeopathy it means there are some teaching there are already some teaching or classical teaching or uh, teaching but we are talking about the advanced teaching so the if we go through the teachings of homeopathy that is similia principle so it is not the hanuman but before hanuman even in the writings of hippocrates that is uh, 460 to 370 bc the tenure of hippocrates and in the writing we uh, know him as uh, the father of homeopathy uh, father of not only the homeopathy but uh, the medical fraternity medicine father of medicine so in the writings of hippocrates we find the teachings that's that is corpus hippocraticum epidemic diseases regimen in acute diseases air water places these are the writings of hippocrates so in the writings so it was not the master hanuman who said the about the similar principle for the first time but before that lots of people told but especially the beginning of similar principle is through the uh, master of medicine that is hippocrates in his writing he has talked about both the both things that is similar principle as well as the contrary or contrary studies contrary this was taken over by uh, dr gallen and the similar, similar syllabus current was uh, developed and spread by master hanuman so in uh, the issue of issue of new principle that in 1796 master hanuman has given the theory or the law of similia and he has given some guidelines in organ of medicines so but in the current time in the current situation we need some advanced teaching that's why the importance of this today's topic is make very uh, important that's why the, all the homeopaths today's homeopath we should know we, we have to teach or we have to learn homeopathy in a way that it can work it can be a result oriented in the present scenario we all know before 200 years ago during the time of hanuman the situation was totally different science was not so much developed the environmental socio economic situation was totally different so at that time but after 2 200 years in current time the situation is totally different that's why we have to upgrade ourselves the teaching and the learning of homeopathy so that it can be result oriented i shall try to uh, discuss the today's topic through the following points that is new challenges to homeopathy advanced teaching what is the advanced teaching in homeopathy fundamentals of homeopathy clinical case study so what are the new challenges in homeopathy practice which makes the today's topic very important relevant the need of practical experience it is uh, my now the physician has a very less time for case study because today is a very competitive world the people population has increased so much now there is a uh, socio economic challenges the people has very less time they are much involved in their personal work in their family work in their uh, jobs so they have a very less time to give the uh, sufficient time to the homeopathic physician for the proper case study so this is a one kind of new challenge second the selection of prescribing symptoms from thousands of symptoms of medicine in homeopathy there are thousands of medicines and in, in most of the medicine the symptoms are more than thousands so it is uh, we can say it is not practical to remember all those symptoms and to look for all those symptoms in a patient so selection of we have to select the prescribing symptoms in the patient in a very shortest time so this 
is also a new challenge. Now, use of allopathy before coming from homeopathic treatment. In our uh, private practice, we come across almost daily that the patient before to the homeopathy, they they really had taken some uh, allopathic treatment, some tablets from some local doctors, from allopathic doctors. So that case become becomes little bit deviated or distorted most of the time. So so we have to for selecting the uh, totality of symptoms or the correct symptoms, it also becomes a challenge. Second, the advancement in modern medical science. Now, before 200 years, definitely we uh, all we agree that now in present time, the modern medical science has increased greatly. Starting from the way of treatment, from investigation part in the surgery, and medicines, a lot of almost daily the researches are coming, uh, are happening, and the new and new medicines and techniques in medical science are coming up. So definitely, the our benchmark has been set by the uh, allopathic system or the modern science. So we have to compete with them. So that's why we have we have we should learn the homeopathy, the advanced homeopathy in such a way that we can come to the indicated medicine in the shortest possible time and that that must work. So this is uh, one of the new challenge and competitiveness. Now the uh, in India, uh, India we can say it is the capital of homeopathy all over the world. The lots of homeopathy colleges, institutes are there and almost every year thousands of homeopathy practices are coming out. So definitely it has there is a kind of competitiveness has come among the uh, we we have to compete not only with the modern science but amongst ourselves that's why we we the homeopaths should equip ourselves in such a way that we come to the indicated medicine we can give relief to the patient in a very shortest and a surest manner and in a confident manner now positive of symptoms Sometimes we see in the patient, even after the exhaustive case taking, we find ourselves very difficult to choose the characteristic symptoms in the patient or the symptoms on the basis of which we can prescribe the indicated medicine. And there, apart from this, there are some other new challenges. That's why the today's topic, I would like to thank to Dr. Hitarth Mehta and all the faculty members that they have chosen this topic for today's discussion because this uh, this will help our uh, students and the homeopathic fraternity and the students to uh, agitate themselves to make the homeopathy very simplified and now now coming to the advanced teaching what can be the advanced teaching in homeopathy what is the advanced teaching it's teachings of classical homeopathy, something different. That is, uh, that is something more than the classical teachings. So, what we uh, the advanced teaching that is that must be result oriented teachings. We learn something more than the classical homeopathy, but that is not working. That is not result oriented. Then I think that is no use of it. That's why our advanced teaching must be result oriented and that is innovative means it it can be uh, taken over by some other uh, professionals it can taken over by some other homeopath in that can be used by some other uh, homeopath or some other medical fraternity so our advanced teaching should be like that now it must be driven by a Change scenario means the scenario what it was before 200 years ago in the time of anyone, it's a rate of cancer, cell disorders, mental diseases as has increased many folds. The, the situation has changed, new and new diseases are coming up. So that's why we have to the homeopathy in such a way that we can cope with the change scenario of today's world. 
now because there are lots of in today's situation in today's time there are lots of things are happening new things are happening that were not has been this uh, given in our uh, literatures whether it is organ of medicine or uh, in our materia medicas but roots are there but we have to unearth those things according to the present situation earlier symptoms were given in literatures of homeopathy but today is the uh, modern medical science they are giving the names of the those symptoms in a different way they are giving the particular terms so that's why we need to advance ourselves according to that but our advancement should have should be based on the fundamental principles of homeopathy it is not that we totally distort the distort the homeopathy totally change the homeopathy is not like that our cardinal principle will be same that is similar similar spoon to single medicine in most of the times and uh, our law of minimum and whatever theory of chronic disease uh, theory of vital force these are our cardinal principles without changing those principles without in a drastic way we have we need to advance ourselves so it is the advanced teaching according to me now how how we can advance ourselves we can advance our teachings we can advance our learning that is uh, it it is mostly in the two way that is learning from experience and that experience from courses or of others so through the uh, once a student when he completes the dhms course and he, he starts practicing he, he is a budding homeopath he or she has started homeopathy so over the years of, or in future he will learn a lot of things after giving the medicine in the patient in the bed side he he will uh, he or she will experience the action of homeopathy that which symptom is important which symptom is working which symptom is not working which medicine is given because in a particular symptom particular this condition there are so many medicines which medicine is working which condition according to uh, that particular need So that is if over the years we get it, and from there we make our mind, we make understanding that no, in a, how we can select uh, a medicine or indicated medicine in a very shortest time, and this is the own experience, and we can also the take the experience of some experience homeopathic doctors. There are lots of good homeopaths in India. We can share, we can um, absorb. their experience in our practice so this is how we can advance our learning we can advance our understanding of homeopathy we can advance our practical uh, knowledge of homeopathy. and second thing through research now uh, what it was 200 years ago lots of researches in today's time lots of researches are going on not only in india but all over the world and those researches it is pre clinical clinical drug proving observation of materia medica repertory through this uh, research we can advance our knowledge the central council for research in homeopathy myself belong to the uh, clinical research unit siliguri we are also here doing lots of researches pre clinical research also is going on in different centers of uh, central council for research in homeopathy and in some other universities institute they are also doing the research related to the homeopathy so though the outcome the positive outcomes gives some advanced knowledge and teachings of homeopathy and those advancement those positive knowledge we can incorporate we can use those outcomes for practice so that uh, we can serve the humanity in a very uh, confident and uh, surest manner now the what are the fundamentals of homeopathy in today's topic there are mainly three things we have to deal with the first the advanced teaching second is the fundamentals of homeopathy and the clinical already one with advanced homeopathy i have discussed now the fundamentals of homeopathy these all are the fundamentals this master hinman in organ of medicine has dealt with the fundamentals in aphorism number 3 this is the main thing that is knowledge of disease knowledge of medicinal powers means homeopath the doctors 
must have the knowledge of disease that is what he has to treat what he has to do in the patient we sell what condition that particular drug or medicine can be used he must have that knowledge now choice of remedy the medicine indicated now we have the knowledge of a particular medicine but how in what condition in which patient we can knowledge is choice of remedy because for a particular fever suppose in homeopathy there are lots of medicine more than 10 20 or even 50 medicines or more than that we can apply that can be applied in a fever but we have definitely according to the principle of homeopathy we have to apply the single medicine so what that medicine will be that is the choice of remedy so we must have the knowledge how to select the particular medicine for a given case preparation means the pharmacy how the homeopathic medicine prepared proper dose fitting the dose of to recall how to and how the in efficiency of uh, organ of medicine and uh, there are some cardinal principle that is law of similia law of simplex similia means similar of simplex at a time single medicine law of minimum dose the dose must be minimum doctrine of drug proving doctrine of drug dynamization theory of chronic diseases theory of battery dose. so these are these are the things which covers the fundamentals of homeopathy and we have to utilize them in today's time in an advanced manner so that we can give relief to the patient now, these are the theoretical and what are the fundamentals of homeopathy in practical sense? That is, in a Aphorism 3, that is the knowledge of disease. This is, uh, okay, we, we must have the knowledge, but how we shall get the knowledge of disease in a in bedside? That is, uh, these are the practical uh, Part of fundamental sound that is case taking, totality of symptoms, anamnesis, individualization, accessory circumstances, keynote symptoms, repertorization, follow up, selection of potency, myism, and etc. So these are the fundamentals, practical fundamentals, which the homeopath must know. He must equip with themselves with these fundamentals. So that is case taking, totality of symptoms, anamnesis, individualization, exercise circumstances, keynote symptoms, separatization, follow up, selection of potency, myism. Now, only because of, of all these points, then only we can do a successful prescription. So, in today's topic, in today's uh, webinar, I shall try to have some advanced uh, teaching or advanced learning. And once we do the successful prescription, that will result directly into a recovery of patient, and that is our first physician's high and only mission is to restore the sick to health to cure agitated trauma. So, coming to the first one, that is case taking, how our case taking will be, would be. That is recording what is case taking, that is recording of symptoms, to recording of symptom of the patient in such a way that it becomes very easy to select the similarity. Means, Master Henneman in organ of medicine has given uh, so many cases for case taking parts. From a provision 83 to 104. Lot of them, but all those points, all those things, uh, it is very difficult to use in all the patients. Even it is practically not possible to use all the points in a given patient. 
so we our case taking should be in a focused manner and in such a way that it become very select for case taking case taking is recording or in other way you can say case taking denotes the recording of complaints of the patient in such a way that the pictures of the diseased person is so complete, completed that the physician can prescribe suitable homeopathic remedy after determining the totality of symptoms. According to uh, Stuart Close, the, the purpose of homeopathic examination is to bring out the symptoms of the patient. Since we have to bring out the symptoms in the patient in such a way as to permit their comparison with the symptoms of the materia medica for the purpose of selecting the similar homeopathic remedy. In homeopathic materia medica, there are thousands, more than 4,000 homeopathic medicine, or it is more than 5,000 homeopathic medicine in the materia medica. And for a particular disease condition, there are so many medicines. And there are some similar symptoms, almost slightly deviated from each other. So our case taking should be in such a way that we can compare with the medicines given in the materia medica so that we can arrive on a particular indicated medicine. According to this is my uh, experience that how I do the case taking. According to uh, this, there is the, our case taking must start from the observation. Means the moment the patient enters the clinic or the room of the doctor, once we see the patient, our casting starts from there. Means the gesture, posture, how patient talks, how patient looks, what is the complexion, the way of standing, the way of talking, the way of uh, approaching, the way of walking. These all we need to observe in the patient because in homeopathic material medicals such things have been given so there are so many symptoms which we can get only through the observation and our case taking in sulfur there has been given the standing is the wash position so once we ask the patient can uh, do you like standing or not so uh, it, it may give some uh, distorted answer it may give some polluted answer means we can't give the proper answer but we have to observe whether when the patient enters the clinic the patient uh, it, it can't uh, he find himself or herself very difficult to stand so our observation can indicate that oh it may be that the patient as standing is the position he doesn't want to stand he, he, he or she tries to serve the seat to sit some chair, some uh, place to sit. So this is this is one example. In every, almost in every medicines of homeopathy, major medica, there are some symptoms that based on the observation. So the our case taking to start from the observation, and it is not that our case taking will be completed in a single sitting. Not always. Sometimes a patient comes. There there may be some multiple regions that the case taking can't be completed. Sometimes even after giving so much time, there's something, something may be left that patient during the next follow up, during the next patient. So in the first uh, visit, I could not say this symptom, this symptom, such thing, such thing. So it may take the, our, the homeopathic physician should know about these things. He should not be in a hurry way. Okay, so that's why one, we should keep in our mind that uh, we should try to complete the case taking in the first visit. But it, we should also keep in mind that it is sometimes not possible. Something also given uh, in the subsequent follow-ups. Symptoms may come from any aspect of the body, means from any part, from the, any organ. Because homeopathy is a whole. As a whole, in homeopathy, we consider the patient or the medicine as a whole. That's why from head to foot, we need to explore, we need to know the patient. Then only we can understand the actual, uh, the individual in that patient. Now, during case taking, we should 
keep our senses totally alert means our eyes our skin our touch our nose these all the five senses we should keep because the in, if suppose there are some stinky smell in the uh, particular part of the body of the patient then our uh, sense organ our the smelling or the olfactory must be strong so we should be while taking the case of the patient we must be alert now our case taking should be case oriented approach case oriented approach means suppose a patient is having a uh, symptom of a particular organ means suppose in the stomach he has some hyper acidity or some pain in the abdomen so we should do the case taking but our focus would be on that particular complaint on that particular complaint uh, we shall in chronic case we shall try to take the symptoms from all over the body but we should try to complete the presenting complaint of the patient our focus must be there it is that's why our case taking should be case oriented then only we can arrive to a indicated medicine in a very shortest way which is our which is in present scenario which we should be our motto now our case taking should also be medicine oriented approach suppose in cpr after uh, after spending some time with the patient if we sense that this patient can be a cpr patient then we for confirming the cpr we should be medicine focused we should ask some symptoms of the cpr to the patient so that's why our casing should be medicine oriented then knowledge of material medical and repertory in uh, repertory and material medical lots of symptoms has been given so to have a proper case taking we, we must have a good knowledge we must have a good grasp of the symptoms given in the repertory and the rubrics uh, symptoms given in the material medical rubrics of the repertory there are lots of rubric uh, that need to explore in the patient that's why for proper case taking we must have the knowledge of material medical repertory so these are the things we should learn for uh, have a perfect picture of the disease or the given case and there may be some other things also now second uh, the fundamental the totality of symptoms means we all know being uh, as most of the participants who have joined today's webinar they all know what is homeopathy and the basic things of homeopathy the fundamental homeopathy so they definitely we can expect that we all know about what is totality of symptoms but uh, uh, that totality of symptoms we need to advance ourselves in acute condition there must be some acute totality so in acute condition what what would be our approach that is try to compute the symptoms what happens suppose patient uh, uh, come with a pain abdomen or acute abdomen and that has uh, for last one or two days he is having uh, pain abdomen so we should try to complete the symptom that is pain abdomen means what is uh, there are four things four component to complete the symptom the uh, position moralities uh, uh, on committing these are the things we need to complete location sensation modalities and concomitant so if once we complete the symptoms so it is most of the cases we can arrive to the indicated medicine suppose patient come to with pain abdomen then we shall try to complete the what is the modalities whether uh, with the bending the uh, with the pressure patient gets relief or not it may give the indication to a particular medicine it may be colocin or is there any time of aggravation of the pain or is there any particular location whether it is around the umbilicus or it is in the right hypochondriac left hypochondriac or in the lower abdomen or in the iliac first we try to complete or whether it is a diffuse pain and also is there any some concomitant or not suppose during pain of the when patient starts headache so there is no 
some uh, there is no direct link between the head and uh, uh, pain abdomen but during the pace during the abdomen patient starts headache so we if we, we find any such concomitant we shall try to complete the symptom so once we complete the symptom the most of the time definitely we shall arrive to the indicated medicine so that makes our time very short during case taking now uh, in acute condition we should focus on the generalities that is on thirst suppose in a fever patient thirst asking the question whether patient has excessive thirst or not or how we take water whether it is small quantity or large quantity whether it is frequent or at long intervals so during the acute condition it makes uh, such questions differentiate with uh, differentiate the medicines as dr stuart close in the previous slide i have shown that uh, comparison our case taking should uh, make ourselves capable to compare with the medicines so that we can arrive on the exact or the indicated medicine so during to complete the totality in the acute condition we should give the importance of the generalities thirst sweat stool mind whether it is prostrated or not tongue immediate history means probable cause so it, these are the things which are very important in acute conditions this is uh, this is the way i do in my practice in in chronic condition to arrive at the totality of symptoms we should give the focus or importance of the past history family history myism constitution disposition genetics in genetics come both things that is physical and mental apart from the presenting complaint in the complaint which with the patient comes so in acute totality our focus would be to complete the symptoms and the genetics and in chronic condition it, it doesn't mean that we shall not think about the myism or situation or the past history family history in the acute condition but we need to consider those also but not it is not required in all cases most of the acute conditions are covered by taking the uh, by completing the symptoms and by taking into consideration the generalities and in, uh, chronic condition our totality uh, must include or we should try to explore the past is see if we if we get any symptoms or then in the past because that may differentiate from one medicine to other family history myism constitution disposition genetics etc because in chronic cases we we can't expect the cure in one or two things or in one or two follow because we have to prepare ourselves for the fight for a long time for uh, for few months in coming few months we have to treat the person that's why in first visit we should try to cover the maximum symptoms starting from the family history past history myism and all in the chronic condition but in acute condition we because even the patient does not the time patient is in acute condition definitely has some problem it does not want to express himself or herself in a proper way that's why in acute condition our fo focus should be such that we can arrive into acute medicine in a very short span what now anamnesis and individualization this is another fundamental of homeopathy is what is anamnesis to how weapon has as a patient means there was a apparently health problem it has that person has changed into a patient that all history include the part of the anamnesis means mainly the past history family history and all including the symptoms of the patient and individualization what is individualization to differentiate a patient from other to differentiate one patient from other having similar complaints So this is another fundamentals. Now, anamnesis. In this slide, we can see how we can arrive 
to the anamnesis. Anamnesis, you know, how a, when a person, when they born, there is a gene which has the effect of both father and mother. And that gene changes into zygote. And from zygote, that what is zygote is, it is unique. It is a unique and unique. The whole, it has the character of both parents and ancestors. And by inquiring about them, about their health, health status or their past history, family history, then we shall come, uh, we can explore the analysis. And the whole means the zygote in future, that zygote change into uh, embryo and after taking birth, that is baby and then child, adult, then uh, a person. So that is in whole future. So there is a planning in zygote how that person will be in future. That is encoded there. And in future, in disease and development, and that when a patient comes to us, there is uh, the characters of both mother, father, and ancestors. And that is addition of accessory circumstances, which Master Anyman has said in aphorism uh, 18 and five, aphorism number five. So that accessory circumstances can be according to the geography, social circumstances, environmental and ecology. In modern term, you can say medical ecology, medical sociology, medical geography. So these are the part of the accessory circumstances. So the anamnesis as a whole in a short form, you can say it includes the history of past history, family history and accessory circumstances. To this, we can uh, do the analysis of the patient, and on the basis of analysis, we can select the medicine. Now, but uh, another fundamental there is the importance of excessive circumstances. So what is these are the excessive circumstances? The ascertainable physical constitution, equilibrium number five, moral and intellectual character, occupation, mode of living, habits social and domestic relation, age, sexual function, etc. So this etc. is very important. Because all these has been given in aphorism 5. Master Henneman has kept the thing open. Then that in future the circumstances may change. New and new things will come in socio-economic status and in the medical field. That, that's why Master Anima has not given uh, all these things in his organ. But through the etc., I want to say that in future, whatever the other circumstances will come, that will come into the, that will, uh, when that will affect the health of the person, that will be taken into consideration as the excessive circumstances. So what are the, uh, what the excessive circumstances do? Development of disease. Acute disease, chronic disease, pseudo chronic disease. And it develops the disease and also it maintains the disease. And it also helps in the management of disease that is complementary to the prescribed medicine. So during case taking, we should explore the circumstances which are associated with the patient. Suppose patient work, working uh, occupation is such that it gives lots of anxiety or he has to travel through a motorbike or whatever some other way or bus or through four wheelers that he has to undergo a journey for hours and gradually over the years he has developed the low back pain or some uh, he has some he has started some insomnia due to anxiety so these are the excessive circumstances which led to the development of the disease so during case taking we should consider and we should try to remove those excessive circumstances if possible through medicine or we can advise the patient for the management of the disease according to our excessive circumstances to keep themselves abstained from that particular stimulus. <clears throat> now the next fundamental there is keynote symptoms. What is keynote? Keynote 
prescribing is the primitive shortest and confident way of prescribing so through keynote we can uh, make the homeopathy very simplified when we get the keynote symptoms in the patient and if we know the keynote symptom in the medicine then we can prescribe now what is what is keynote symptoms it is nothing but the characteristic symptom of the patient the characteristic symptom of certain drug is to be remembered and these symptoms are to be sought in the patient while prescribing keynote symptom the keynote word has been given by dr h n ganshi and uh, he has first uh, before that uh, dr jacob jenis he has also thought about the keynote symptom because in uh, homeopathic metamedica each drug has thousands of symptoms but it is practically not possible to remember those symptoms all the time or during case taking that's why we need to remember or we need to know the characteristic symptoms few characteristic symptoms of each and every medicine so if we can at least know the 10 characteristic of each drug i think we can uh, a good in our practice so this is one of the fundamentals there are some other there are, uh, there are more than 35 way of prescribing and keynote prescribing is one of that there are lots of uh, in in the next seminar we shall explore the each and every aspect of these fundamentals of homeopathy uh, because each topic uh, requires hours for dealing a keynote symptom because there are more than 35 way of prescribing there is a constitution of prescribing based on the miasm based on the uh, disposition based on the genetics based on the mental symptom that like this there are more than 35 way of prescribing and keynote prescribing one of that so keynote prescribing one of the fundamentals that the each and every homeopath should uh, learn if we can remember the keynote symptoms of each and every or most of the medicines then that makes our practice very easy and confident repertorization how how repertorization would be it, it is suggestive it is not that the always you shall give the medicine which has been given the repertorization after repertory the medicine comes it is not that we have to give that medicine only repertory is the suggestive it gives a group of medicines for the particular given condition we take the decision after consulting with the materia medica so oh, we come sometime i have seen lot of homeopath a lot of people that they only prescribe after doing the repertorization and once the first medicine comes or the having the maximum score they prescribe this is i think uh, okay this good but it is not always that so we should keep in our mind that the party is not the final it is the suggestive and i in my personal practice in a personal uh, level i utilize repertorization in tau and zambal cases means where the characteristic or the individualizing or the picture of the disease is, or the patient is not clear means patient is not giving the clear cut symptoms there is always vague symptoms common symptoms and it is not indicating to a particular medicine there we take the case and we repertorize with the uh, available symptom uh, five, five to 10 symptoms and after repertorization whatever medicine comes after consulting with we give so uh, personally i use the repertory in tau in number cases but where the case is very clear and that symptom is present in the uh, material medicals and that uh, the group of symptom that indicate a particular medicine uh, i prescribe and our we should do the repertorization we should select such a repertory as per case we know there are lots of uh, types of uh, repertory in uh, homeopathic literatures so we said we should have the knowledge that what kind of repertory we shall 
used in the given case. There are lots of uh, uh, organ-wise, system-wise, and symptom-wise repertory. There is general repertory, particular repertory, clinical repertories. So, and it is not that uh, that uh, all a particular repertory will cover all the cases. It is not that. And each and every repertory has its importance. That's why, and each and every repertory has its uh, a particular philosophy that is on which it is based. BBCR, Kent's repertory, uh, uh, Boric repertory, and uh, uh, close J. H. Clark repertory. So each and repertory has its own importance. Now, coverage of symptoms rubric is important. So, uh, in a given case, we suppose the patient has come with a particular symptoms. So, we should try to select that medicine which covers that symptoms. This is my personal experience that coverage of symptoms, the presenting symptoms in the repertory is very much important. It is not like that that we shall uh, select the rubric which is uh, not the important symptom in the patient so this is the way this is the practical or uh, the thing we i used to follow and it is my advice you all also to follow now doing so we should do the follow-up in the given case how we should do the follow-up in mainly in the three plane the mental plane somatic plane pathological plane. Somatic plane include and mental plane include both the presenting. Suppose the patient has with the mental symptoms or the mental complaint. That follow up uh, mental plane will cover that uh, complaint. If patient has come with some uh, physical complaint, the pain in abdomen or pain in uh, joints or some hyper acidity problem or some abdominal complaint, that will cover the somatic plane. And if some patient during the first visit, patient has come with some pathological reports or patient has some, uh, in future he will do the pathological, we should compare what is the pathological uh, uh, pathological report earlier and uh, in doing follow-up. So our follow-up should be on this three plane. It is not that the patient has come uh, in patient, the presenting complaint was the pain in the joints. So we shall only cover in the in follow up the how uh, the pain of the joint was uh, earlier and now it is not. We, apart from this, we have to also ask now after taking the medicine, how you are feeling, how is your well or patient sometimes during the first week, if he has found the somatic complaints, the first visit patient sometimes does not tell about the mental but during, after taking the medicine during the follow-up patient sometimes say no after taking medicine my sleep has improved i am feeling much relaxed now i am i feel euphoric i'm very calm and quiet so it doesn't matter if the company is a somatic plane it doesn't mean that we shall not ask about the mind so during all the follow-ups our follow-up should be on three plane. Selection of potency dose. According to me, this is my understanding, and I have also seen in the literature that if the medicine is indicated, that if medicine has been selected properly, that is on the basis of symptom similarity, we should not bother about the potency dose and repetition. Definitely, we should take care of that. What is what should be the potency? What should be the dose and repetition? We have some guidelines for the potency, guidelines for the dose, guidelines for the repetition. But in a practical way, if the medicine is well chosen, or if we have selected the indicated medicine according to the in will not improve. It doesn't mean that the medicine will not work. If the medicine has been selected on the basis of symptom similarity, then definitely 
medicine will work and the next come the potency dosage replacement. So some guidelines has been given in our work close forward since that uh, regarding the potency selection, dose selection, and the distribution of the medicine. But the main is the experience. There's lots of work in India that they use the particular potency of a particular medicine. And according to them, that particular medicine in that particular medicine, uh, potency acts well. So this is a kind of experience we shall not get uh, in uh, uh, in our literature. So the self experience and the experience of uh, some other doctor is very important in this respect. Uh, over the years, the practice we make understanding about the particular medicine that that uh, that according to the flow of the patient, according to the type of the patient, according to the type of the complaint, we make understanding that, okay, sulfur will, uh, in this condition, will sulfur 6 is very important. That, uh, my experience, that in case of severe reaching, that comes with the ringworm, which is prevalent, uh, uh, which is very quite common, that uh, ringworm, there are lots of patients and almost all the homeopath they used to get this such kind of patient so here my experience sulfur 6 is very uh, acts well in diminishing the itching of the ringworm so this is a one experience which i have shared so in in case of selection of potency dose and repetition experience is very important now myism my myism in a practical view Myism, the lots of confusion as well related with the myism because new homeopath generally they sometimes they become confused that how they should use the myism. Myism, take it easy, take it simple. Myism is nothing but it is a dynamic cause of disease and its importance are it can create an obstacle to the recovery. This is one thing more useful in chronic cases in acute condition. We mostly based on the presenting complaint. And we generally we consider the myism when we have to treat, we need to treat a chronic case where we have to uh, prescribe the medicine for a progression of the condition to root out the condition. Then for that purpose, we definitely need to consider the myism under our purview. That medicine which has been prescribed, that must condition, consider the myism. And myismatic coverage gives confidence in prescribing. So once when we prescribe the medicine and that medicine also covers the myism, that also gives a con confidence in ourselves to know definitely that medicine will work. When indicated medicine fails, we consider myism only when uh, after select after giving a medicine uh, that is well chosen and on the basis of symptom similarity, but fails, then we think what may be the obstacle for long lasting recovery, etc. These are the practical point of myism. Now coming to the case study, this is the third point of today's uh, topic. First one, the advanced teaching. Second one, the fundamentals of homeopathy, and now case study. This is the case one. This is a case of hydronephrosis and hydroureter with calculus polycystitis. Now, this is uh, this case I had done in, uh, almost uh, uh, five years ago, five to six years ago, and uh, this is the case of thirty-two years male of West Bengal. Presenting complaint of difficulty in hold, holding urge for micturation, aggravation at night and winter season. And the complaint was one and a half years uh, duration and mode of onset was gradual. So the patient presenting complaint difficulty in holding urge for micturation. I mean, patient can't hold urge for urine. 
and patient came with the ultrasound it is 2012 that is grade one prostatomegaly with chronic retention of urine and chronic cystitis left sided hydronephrotic and hydroureteric changes so these are the patient has already come with the reports now past history there is a pulmonary tuberculosis 15 years back severe pain in right iliac fossa and uh, two to three stones uh, 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 few years ago has already passed but during that time during the ultrasound we see there is no stones but grade one prostatomegaly with chronic retention of urine and chronic cystitis left sided hydronephrotic and hydroureteric changes family history paternal side uncle had suffered from kidney stone mother suffered from gastric complaint and own side sister operated for appendicitis this is a personal history patient used to take tobacco he was a religious worker regular diet married one son one daughter and family relation good this, these are the genetics we can see appetite less thirst less desire spicy and urine frequent desire for urine stool irregular sleep sound thermal relation hot tongue ir mind irritable physical examination it's all okay but during examination we right half of face dry and warm left half of face cold to touch i have given this in the red color this is very important these are the prescribing points past history of tuberculosis second right half of face dry and warm means right half of face if uh, this is right right half of face dry and warm right half and left half of the face cold to touch this is a very important symptom for a particular medicine very cut this is this is the medicine which i described this this is the prescription procedure and it was treated for one and a half years and it was prescribed in from lm1 to lm27 up to 27 and first few months it was od then uh, alternate day and over the from to begin with it was from the first cup and gradually it went up to the fourth cup and treatment was given for one and half years Drosera lm1 to lm27 along with the placebo this is the only one medicine no medicine medicine has not been changed so this is the after treatment we can see this is before treatment after treatment normal size prostate with mild nodular prominence of median low means now prostate has come to the normal uh, size and there is no indication of hydroureteric or hydronephrotic so this is the drosera and study of the case says the similarity only two symptoms on the basis of which I described the medicine. The history of tuberculosis, it has been in the Bo Boger, J. S. Clark, and right half of the right, right half of face dry and warm, left half of face cold and touch. This is Metramedica pura, symptom number 255, and it is also given in the Boric Metramedic under the Drosera. And there are some eventual similarity means uh, after during case taking we find there are some symptoms of the patient which are similar with the drosera. What are those symptoms? In metrometrica pura, sleep in drosera, the sleep is sound and snoring, urine frequent desire for urine, stool irregular three to four times. These are the similarities, the other terms which are similar in the drosera which are eventually similar but during prescribing due to it may be due to the lack of knowledge we could not match but it is uh, we all know when we uh, match the characteristic symptom of the patient characteristic symptom of the medicine then some other symptoms also come in the line with the similarity this is what it happened but there are some symptoms also which are in contradiction means those symptoms which are present in the patient but in the 
medicine means drosera. In patient, it was normal in mouth, but in metrametrica pura, the bitter taste in mouth. In every taste, we have the symptom of drosera. That is the symptom number 90 in under drosera. So this case shows that we we should do our job in a very transparent or in a very dedicated manner and leave the rest on the medicine then definitely we shall achieve so what happened here we we did our job that is we took the correct symptom and match with the medicine and prescribed some symptoms comes eventually similar and some were contradictory but medicine has worked and patient has improved this is the uh, first now this is the second case second this is a case this is a very recent case in 2021 i this case here you see liguri and this is a case nasal polyp advised for surgery means the patient come that uh, see uh, you have to go for surgery for the nasal polyp but patient didn't want to go for the surgery and you came to the treatment for homeopathy then presenting complaint in the picture we can see there is a in the right nostril there is a polyp inside the right nostril and it is clearly visible you can see and it was bleeding and patient uh, it has it, it was for 15 days means when has come first visit before 15 days this complaint has started and patient went for uh, the allopathic treatment they are doctors for the surgery patient did not want for the surgery and came to the homeopathic treatment so this is a paper where uh, it has advised it is enteral already and he advised for the surgery a patient already gone for the pre surgist is blood test is urine or chest x-ray patient uh, bring all those records this is a case taking appetite good desired junk food tongue red tip coated stool irregular profuse sweat sleep sound obstinate revengeful attitude in children or in child uh, how we can get the symptom of revengeful this is also a very uh, important thing in this in this case when i ask the patient or ask the mother that when the patient plays when the child plays with some other child if suppose other child beats your daughter how she acts mother said she also beats unless and until she beats she does not remain silent she will not be quiet only after beating she will uh, be quiet so this gave me a sense of revengeful and past history nothing family history nothing is specific this is a point of prescription bleeding polyp revengeful attitude i prescribe acid nitric 30 od for four days and placebo this is on first november 2021 this is a follow-up uh, second uh, first follow-up on 8th november uh, second follow-up on 22nd these are the dates of follow-ups in during the third follow-up we can see and the second follow-up the bleeding is stopped but in the next visit in the bleeding is little there are little bleeding but after that there is no bleeding and during since the follow-up since 29 21 the size of the swelling in placebo prescribed and on 14th february 2022 that is november december january february means almost four months or less the polyp diminished no bleeding means within three and a half months patient has almost recovered and we could last acid nitric 30 was given for two dose on 17th january this is the after treatment in the picture we can see there is no uh, mass or swelling inside the right nostril 
this is before and after treatment. In before treatment, we can see there is uh, in the right nostril, but after treatment, so this is what the lesson learned. This is the keynote prescribing. Is one of the fundamentals of homeopathy that we should do uh, good in this. Sense. And once improvement are done, means uh, we can see in the prescription that is only few doses of acid nitric 30. Only three occasion has been prescribed, and less of the time we prescribed uh, placebo. This is there are lots of lesson to be learned. It can be explored. This case has been learned in a very good manner. If uh, the uh, Dr. Hitarth Mehta and uh, other faculty they uh, tell, then I shall share one another case. Otherwise, we can wind up. Hitarth, sir. Yes, sir. You can share, sir. Yes, sir. You can continue, okay. sir. Last case, no? Yeah. Yes, sir. You Last can one. continue, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 This is the third case. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, yeah. Yes, sir. Is... This is uh, the presenting complaint. Uh, this patient came uh, on in 2017 August. So this is the presenting complaint. Recurrent pain with soreness in left lumbar region of abdomen burning and stitching sensation left renal region for one week in in this case also it was the acute pain of renal stone and uh, the ultrasound patient came with the report and in, in in the ultrasound report we can see there is a left renal small obstructing cal calculus and the size of the calculus 5.3 mm 5.3 mm and uh, because of renal stone, the patient has uh, started pain, especially in the left lumbar region of abdomen, and the sensation are burning and stitching for one week. And this patient was also taking allopathic medicine, but that was not helping. This is the case taking. These are the physical general appetite good, desire sour and meat, thirst, excessive. Tongue moist and clean, perspiration profuse, stool regular, urine clear. Patient has thick eyebrows. This is very important. You know, uh, in in the earlier slides during the case taking, I have I told I mentioned that during the case taking we should keep our senses open because from where we can get the symptom we do not know. That is symptom or indicated that may indicate some particular medicine or that. That of the symptom on the basis of observation or that symptom of doing a case taking that may be important for a particular medicine. That's why the case taking part is very important. And mind, uh, patient was mild disposition in past history, nothing. In family history, there is asthma and grandmother diabetes, light. And history treatment, patient was already undergoing allopathic treatment conservative is before is part of homeopathic medicine and as the it could not the pain could not relieve by allopathic medicine patient came for the homeopathic once after doing the uh, ultrasound and it was given the renal stone and there is a homeopathy enjoys the reputation the renal stone is almost uh, in all cases we can almost in all cases we can handle the renal stone through homeopathic medicine this is a perception in the society and this is good for homeopathy. That's why we find lots of renal stone in our opiates. This is the follow-up. First time patient on uh, 2nd August 2017. I have given the presenting complaint ultrasound report. And there Barbaris Bhalgaris on the basis of the symptoms in that Barbaris is 30 BD. Right. Next day, patient came pain in right umbilical region. Now, patient came with the pain in the right umbilical region with loose stool. 
cuyo artículo no was given a placebo on 3rd August visit. Means when patient had come on 3rd and a particular placebo, that pain diminished. That pain in the right umbilical region was not because of the right uh, renal stone, uh, because, of left, uh, because of the renal stone, but that was some due to some uh, acute gastritis. That's why it was lured watching for after hours. Now on 24th August, intermittent pain in left lumbar region. On 10th August 2000, uh, 2017 it would be. Now evening last for one to two minutes. Means in uh, last pain it was Uh, 10th August 2017 and 1 and 2. Again, uh, Barbis was given. Visit on swimming on. But it is not completely removed. So that's why here my mind is because there was a strike in my mind that it may be that though uh, improved in uh, there was no pain as it was in but it's still pain has not completely subsided very intermittent pain so that's why and there was a thick eyebrows it is the indication of psychotic miasm and it is indication of thuja and on the basis of this thuja occidentalis 30 44 doses were prescribed and on the next visit there no such pain Pain has totally uh, means since taking the thuja, pain totally diminished and that, that has not recurred. Frequently, mixturing with amount passing of urine means uh, there was less amount of urine, but it was frequent. As the pain has totally subsided, that's why I advise ultrasonography for rechecking whether there is a stone or not. Patient uh, did the ultrasound and on the 4th October 2017, ultrasound, patient came with ultrasound report and it showed both kidneys are normal, no pain in abdomen and six uh, October 2017, patient reported that few days ago, Stone has one stone passed through the. In this case, we can understand that Burgess very well though indicated according to the symptom similarity, but it was not successful in in, in spelling the stone. That may be because of homeopathic philosophy says that it may be because of the miasm. That's why Thuja indicated with the thick eyebrow was prescribed. And that cleared the case. Pains are essentially within really normal limits. Let's learn. Anti block cleared by anti-magnetic medicine. Anti-magnetic medicine must be supported by indication. For a particular magnetic support is sora, syphilis, or uh, psychosis. For each and every magnetic, there are so many medicines. Uh, there is a acid nitric, some other medicine, uh, there are lots of other medicine also, which are psychotic. But we can't prescribe all the medicine at a time. There must be some indication for that particular medicine. Here, the thuja was indicated only uh, as it was, there is a thick eyebrow. There is a bushy, bushy eyebrow in the patient, which is medicine for thuja. So, thuja given, case is cleared. Here, this case also has some limitations. And there are lots of lessons to learn. Some, in case of renal stones, people may uh, raise questions that as the ureter, as the ureter, the caliber of 6 mm, so 3 mm, so, so the stone may pass as it is. But if it is so, then all the stones should pass. But it is not like that. So, 
it is the disposition of a stone which has been cleared by the homeopathic medicine that uh, improved the case. So, uh, case uh, lots of things to learn. So, thank you. Thank you all. I would, uh, once again, I would like to thank Dr. Hitat Mehta, Dr. Surab Desai sir, Dr. Ehina Rawal ma'am, Dr. B.P. Panda sir, and all the faculty of Homeopathy for giving me this opportunity so that I could some my experience. Thank you so much, sir, you, sir. for this valuable presentation. Uh, now I'll invite Dr. Hitat Mehta, the principal of Rajkot Homeopathic Medical College, to summarize the session of today. Thank you so much, sir, once again. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ina, madam. The topics of the today's webinar, that is advanced teaching of fundamentals of homeopathy with uh, clinical case study. The topic is very important for the uh, students of the PhD and PG scholar and very important topics for the uh, homeopathic perspective and for the practitioner as well. Uh, sir started with the basic uh, aim and perspective of the advanced teaching, that is late, less time for the case taking, selection of the prescribing symptoms, which is useful for the uh, selection of the medicine from the thousands of the symptoms, use of allopathic before coming from homeopathic treatment, then positive of the symptoms means case is lacking with the symptom. We can think of uh, utilize our knowledge in terms of the advanced teaching. Then the result oriented teaching with innovative ideas driven by the change of scenario and based on the fundamental principles. So it can be rectified by the learning experience then drug proving and nicely correlated with the knowledge of the materia medica and repertory sir then quoted with the aphorism number three that is knowledge of disease knowledge of medicine that is knowing the individuality of the medicine to disease and mold, modes of uh, preparation of the drug proper dose repetition of the dose for the obstacles of the recovery then sir quoted with the cardinal's principles law of similia simplex law of minimum Doctrine of drug proving, drug diminution, my, uh, theory of chronic disease, then theory of the vital force. Then quoted with the aphorism number 83 to 104, that is the recording of the symptoms of the patient. It becomes very easy to select the similimum. And the case taking portion, that is starting with the observation, multiple setting, that is the case oriented approach, knowledge of the materia medica and repertory, medicine oriented approach, and totality of the acute condition and chronic condition. For the acute condition, try to complete the symptoms and importance of generalities. For the chronic disease, importance of the uh, past history, that is family history, theory of the miasm, constitution, diathesis, disp disp uh, disposition, and generalities. Then quoted with the amnesis mn and uh, theory of the individualization. And the importance of the accessory circumstances, that is how to find out the fundamental cause, which is nicely uh, quoted by Honeyman. Uh, by BK Sarkar in aphorism number 5, that is physical in constitution, immoral, intellectual character, occupation, mode of living and habits, social and domestic relation, age and sexual function. Then in development of the disease, uh, acute disease, chronic disease, then pseudo-chronic disease, importance of the keynote symptoms, then repetition, theory of the repetition, then follow-up case, that is mental plane, somatic plane, that is physical plane and pathological plane. That the, then the selection of the potency and reputation and uh, quoted with the example of the ringworm, uh, sulfur-6, which acts best in the uh, cases of the ringworm. Myism, theory of the myism, which is very important in order to treat the, uh, the dynamic defective uh, potential which occurring in the entrance of the process of recovery and cure. Then the nicely quoted with the two case, uh, three cases, that is the first case that is Patient is having difficult to hold the urge of urination, which has been treated by the Drosera LM 0 by 1 to 0 by 27. So LM 1 to 27. And symptoms of the patient should be fitted with the symptoms of the materia medica. Then case of nasal poly, which was treated with the nitric acid 30. And last, that is renal stone, which was treated with the Barberis vulgaris and intercurrent miasmatic uh, thuja, which was given on the basis of the symptom similarity of the thuja. So the thing is that uh, uh, the inform informative webinar in terms of the uh, clinical perspective and nicely correlation with the theory of the uh, organon, organon perspective, materia medica and repertory.
thank you very much uh, ranjit sir for your wonderful session now i invite uh, principal of the paru institute of human research dr bp panda sir for proceed for the vote of thanks over to dr panda sir thank you meeta sir for inviting me to give vote of thanks we the faculty members are very much thankful to dr ranjit soni sir for sharing his vast experience in a simple simple manner for the audience i am very much thankful to the management of parul university specifically our director dr komal madam president dr devansh patel sir and dean of the faculty dr purab sir and all my dear colleagues for nicely arranging such type of webinar for the audience and our fraternity actually what i find sir has explained from the beginning to the end with supportive documents and how to take uh, less time to finalize a medicine at, and be success in a uh, in a nice manner which will enhance the knowledge as, as well as encourage all the audience to treat such type of uh, such uh, manner for the treatment even in homeopathy in comparison to allopathy and uh, in respect of principle he has mentioned all organ and metamedica repository use of these three pillars in the treatment nicely thank you very much sir and hope the same cooperation in future i am very much thankful to all the audience those who have participated in this webinar to make it success i am thankful to our support uh, technical support team and those who are supporting us in indirectly and dire directly to making this webinar successful thank you thank you very much thank you sir so let us let us end the same webinar thank you